Hello, boys. How's it going? Good. You? Good, good, good. What's going on this weekend? Well, this weekend we are here, last qualifying race of the season. And I'm not stressed. Fuck off. <laughs> It's the Sky Run, which is the last chance for the runners to get a golden ticket. There's already 11 people who are guaranteed to get those places. So for everyone else, they're having to fight in this last race to get every point to make sure they're one of the others. My name is Karina Carsolio. I'm from the Salomon running team, and I'm from Mexico. And Karina Carsolio from Mexico was third at Dolomith after a very impressive downhill. Indeed, Martin, let's see if she can confirm today on a similar type of terrain here in Aspen. I was really looking forward to that race because it's a course I really like. Like, I love technical stuff, but Sierra Sinal was terrible. Um, I'm not a very fast runner, and Sierra Sinal is definitely really fast. Even though it's, like, always going uphill or downhill, it's very fast. So I'm pretty sure I'm sitting in like at 15 or 16, something like that. So I need to like do really good on this race to be able to get in. Cabin crew ready for departure. At the moment on the overall ranking, I'm 11th, which is a tricky spot because there is still a lot of girls who only have raced twice. So if they race a third one and they've got good results, they'll probably get ahead of me, which means I'll get out of the top 11th. So not only do I need to score big points, but I also need to stop fast girls to score points as well, which is why I'm here. So right now, I'm currently 14th in the series. Um, and I am a senior program manager for my job. And my job is about so many spreadsheets. Uh, so you can imagine that I have a very robust spreadsheet when it comes to this series. Uh, so I know pretty much exactly like who should be in front of me and who should be behind me. But when it comes down to it, like you never know what's going to happen on race day. It, it's helpful to have that intel. Um, but top five should, top five has the highest probability of getting me to the final. Let's just say that. <laughs> Karina Carsolio has amazed everyone. She's from Mexico, which means that in Europe, most of us don't truly understand how she's done in her races. We don't know how hard they are, what kind of field they have. So to come to the Dolomish run, where you've got races like Marcella and Judith leading out, and when someone appears at a race that is one of the most technical in Europe, that is in the, the hearts of most people, the most technical continent, there's a lot of fear about what this athlete can do because to do that in your first race, it shows that she's got massive ability. And if she can do three races this season, she could qualify, and that could set her up for a whole career of racing. The Golden Trail World Series started for me at Dolomites, which was almost the half of the season. I missed the two first stages because I was focusing on orienteering then. And then, okay, Dolomite didn't go so well for me, a bad shape, problem with the knee. I was maybe number 28 or nine. And then Ciazinal, well, didn't go as well neither for me, maybe not good shape enough neither. I was maybe 19th, and it was so huge density there. And then finally, uh, at Chemgao there, it went pretty well and with a third place. So now I'm quite uh, hopeful to get um, good points also here in Skyrun and, uh, and try to qualify for the, for the final. There's two men who so far have the potential to do really well at the Skyrun but have actually had some bad results so far. And if they don't do well today, just won't qualify. Frederick Tronchard, he could win today, as could El Hussein. And because they've got such low scoring races as their top three currently, if they do well here, they'll be quite high in the overall rankings. But if they don't get a good result today, that's it, they're out. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, I feel that my knee is uh, back in business and uh, I think it in his better, best shape it has ever been this season so far. So, yeah, I'm, I'm quite confident, actually. Having two athletes at the final, this is crucial to us as a brand. It uh, shows us, or it shows credibility. And especially at the finals, you're competing against the best athletes in the world. So, of course, uh, I would like to see them kicking ass. Hi, I'm Anthony Felber and I run for the Team Matrix and I'm from France. 
One of the teams that's been really impressive this season has been Team Matrix. They've got two people that can potentially qualify for the final, which when you think of the names of the brands and the established other runners out there, to do that so quickly is, is really admirable. Anais has been super strong. She's already qualified. And Anthony Ferber, quite a new runner, is in a really strong position as well. He's been consistent throughout the season, which is great in terms of his ability, but it does mean that for him to improve on his points today, he actually needs to be in top five, potentially higher, and hope that some individual runners don't podium. He's got a really good chance to get into those finals, and for a new team to have a male and a female, that would be brilliant. You guys are ready? You nervous? Yeah. More yeah. Nervous you yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name is Thomas Janichon. I'm the manager of Team Matrix and I'm from France. Team Matrix is an independent French structure of trail running. Um, the goal is to try to reach a top world class level, but with a different approach than the, the brands. In the mental approach, but also the physical approach, but also the familiar approach. And finally, their balance between school, university, work, and high-level sports. Quatre, cinq, six. Oh, no. And for example, we can maybe have three athletes on the final just after two years and a half. So it's so cool. Just behind Salomon, I think we, we can be the second big team uh, of the world. <laughs> so let's, let's see. I'm coming. I think um, if I reach the place between the six and the eight, it could be a, a good position to secure and to have a ticket for the final. But I will do my best for the race and then uh, we will see uh, at the finish line. Uh, we are at the last stage of the Golden Trail World Series in Sky Rune, Askane. And uh, we are gonna get really hot and messy and it's gonna be a really good time. <laughs> when I said yesterday I wasn't nervous, I think I was lying. Because <laughs> it all caught up to me today. So I'm gonna go to the bathroom and <laughs> I had never started a race before that was so late, right in the middle of the sun. So I'm usually, we usually start all races in the morning. So it was definitely something out of like the usual on my comfort zone. <laughs> it was really hot. <laughs> and yes, the crazy sky run is on. The last qualifying race of the season. Absolutely, power. And let's not forget, it is the athlete's last chance to punch their ticket for the final of the Gold Trail World Series in El Hierro. We can see that Bart went out super fast taking the lead. He's alone a few meters in front of the rest. Yeah, and I can't help but notice so... So when I got to Myanmar, it was just crazy. So much noise everywhere and also the smoke, like you have got in the stadium. Uh, so it felt, uh, it felt quite crazy. I was a little bit expecting it because I knew it would be like that, but it was, I think, even more crazy than I thought. So it gave so much energy. You, you just want to fight then. <laughs> you want to run hard. when everyone is like moving to the same energy, um, it was like that except you're, uh, you're like a, you're just a spectator in it. So even though they're the spectators, I feel like they are the entertainment and we're just passing through it. This season, I think in many races, I've been a bit conservative, a bit scared of blowing up and I've ended up always finishing the race like, ah, this was okay, but never like, oh, fuck you. Um, so I think it's the time of the season where I can afford to take more risk and I'm just gonna start as hard as I can and try to hang on. And if I blew up, well, that's part of the game and that would be my fault, but at least I won't have any regrets like I've had in the previous races. Just before me and I started like having difficulty breathing. It was way too hot. I was trying to not to focus on that. And then the downhill helped me a bit. I passed uh, Lucille Germain again, and I passed uh, Danny Moreno. But then, <laughs> 
Then like it was super humid and hot and I just, I, I was having a lot of problems there and they passed me again and I was, I just kept looking at my watch and like, oh, I was not going at the rhythms that I'm used to. And mentally it was really hard too. Like I was having trouble, <laughs> yeah. All right, and they're now starting the first descent of the race, and Fred Tranchant from Team Scott has now taken the lead. Yeah, that's right, and LZ and Ella Zoe and Sylvain Kishard are right behind. And look, just a few meters back, we have Joanne Beaujard from Team Matrix. The whole group is running together from the very beginning. We should be seeing some moves soon. Fred is still on the lead, and we will see if he can hang on to it. Oh, and look at that! Look at that line from Joanne! He's definitely fresh to have such awareness and go through it with such flow! It's a very hot day here, and you see the runners taking the time to wet their caps during the river crossing. The start of Skyrune was crazy. Fred was leading the race, and Iris was battling against Elise uh, for the podium. So I really hope that they pull it off and, and stick with their, with their current position. I think Elusin was um, the closest, and at some point I even asked, okay, do you want to go? But he, he said, no, no, just stay, and we, we just push hard, and we, I think we were going quite fast. And then we started the uphill of the run, and I knew, okay, this is last uphill, and uh, if you are leading in the top, you are in a very good position. at the summit of the first uh, climb. It was uh, at Miramar. Uh, Ninke was just behind me, and I feel uh, really tired, even if it was only five kilometers from the start. She passed me in the second uphill, and she was really strong. I couldn't uh, follow her rhythm. And here's Ninke Brinkman in the first position at the river crossing. <laughs> Look at her fly through. She's even reeling up Matrix runner, Anthony Felber. <laughs> yes, yeah, she's unbelievable. Ninke's performance was Mordesque, and she will be watching. She didn't even look like she was trying. She didn't need to. And this was a technical course, and the big question about her is whether, when it comes to technical terrain, she can keep on running at that pace. We're not sure yet, but it's looking good. Behind her, we had Iris, Karina, and Danny all trying to get on the plane. I think I was so, I mean, this race meant so much for me, right? Like, I needed to do well to make the final, that in the first couple sections, it was almost like it passed me by. And then as the race developed, like, I was like, well, this is cool, you know? I passed Iris. I think I passed Lucille. And then I could see third and fourth, like, in the distance. And I was like, whoa, I'm actually, like, moving up. Oh, check this out. It looks like Sarah and Emily have taken the wrong route. What's going on here? They must have kept going on the ridge and missed the left turn towards the last climb to Laroon. Yeah, and now Danny Moreno moves on to second position in the middle of this confusion. When my muscle shuts down, I just try to not listen to it and be like, Iris, everybody's suffering. Just accept it and keep on going and see how far you can go. I was just like cramping everywhere. So I was like, well, don't destroy yourself even more before the second downhill. Do what you can, try to enjoy it, even if it sucks. Just go until the finish and take it in. It's the last race of the season. At some point in the uphill, uh, I had to walk because it was so heavy. And then Johan, Johan Boja, which was really strong, he started to pass me. And then suddenly also Jan Margrit came and Pascal Igli towards the end of the, of the top. So yeah, that was a tough time of the course. The top of a run is like a rock concert. It feels like the whole town has gone there just to cheer you on. And we had three new people in the podium positions at the top. Fred and El Hussein had been leading up that charge, but they started to fade. And we suddenly saw Jan Marguerite, who has been awful this season, suddenly reminding everyone of how good he is. He caught Johan just before the, the peak, and Jan Marguerite couldn't 
destroy a downhill. It's like sky running, but with nothing to grab on because there's like pokey things in the grass. So you're like, I had like all these thorns in my hand. Sarah somehow threw another move. Now I just, uh, like my hamstring cramped up <laughs> and I yelled out a curse word. So I was like, oh my gosh, like if I can't finish the race at this point, like I'm gonna be so mad. And so I just kind of like grabbed onto another thing in this guy turned back, he's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna make it okay. <laughs> so then we made it to the top and I was actually the third one to the top because that hamstring thing just like messed me up. And then Sarah was, she had already started descending. Emily, like she's a great descender. And um, I think a big mistake I did is like, before the race, I told myself to use the technical part as like a recovery before it gets faster. Whereas, so I wasn't as aggressive as I should have been. Um, and I definitely lost some seconds there. Well, I was really grateful that the clouds came on because doing that uphill with the heat that was uh, before would have been like a total torture. And here is Johan Bouchard from Team Matrix coming in second position. And the winner, Jan Margaret, is here to congratulate him. What an emotional moment for both of them here, Martin. Man, I love this sport. Today it wasn't uh, as good as I expected before the race, but uh, for the Team Matrix, it was uh, a really good race with two second place. Looking at the Matrix results, I don't know if they'll be happy or not, because starting the day, they had two runners potentially qualified. And at the end of the day, they've still got that. But it's just not the people you expected. It was a matrix day, as I say, with Elis finished second, Johan with an incredible race. He passed at the top of the ring first, but he finished second after a big downhill. So yeah, it was totally impressive and also motivating for the rest of the years. So yeah, it's so cool to live moments like this, really, really, really. And Fred Tranchan is coming in fourth and just missed the podium. Yeah, we were hoping for a little bit of a better performance for the Scott Runner today, but fourth place should be enough for him to enter the top 10 and punch his ticket to El Hierro. After Skyrun, looking back at the season, uh, I think I can be really happy and um, because in the beginning it didn't start well at all and uh, I was wondering if I would be able to, to make it and I think the, at least the two last races went quite well so, so yeah, I, I can be really happy with that. And Nienke will take the win! Yes, Pau, and look at that, the stoke today is as big as her performance! At least takes the second place, solid day for Team Matrix. Sarah Alonso rounds up the podium and Danny Moreno is fourth. Aw oh, man, these two really better. The annoying thing about the athletes on this series is that they're lovely people and you say, right, what do you need at this race? What are you gonna do? And they say, I just wanna perform at my best. If I race well, you know, things will come to me. But no, this is a competition. You need to know the points you need and who you need to beat and most of the athletes aren't thinking seriously about this. Danny Marino, however, she works in a software firm, she's clever, she is a cool cat, and she knows with every race what she needs and who she needs to be. It was just so cool because I feel like for most people, like, fourth place isn't, isn't anything spectacular. Like, I know in the Golden Series, like, top five gets prize money and stuff. Um, but I just felt like I was celebrating because I knew that I, I like made the final, which was a goal that I felt like was really audacious, you know, coming into this. I think I went from like 
14th to 8th in the rankings, and it was just all, it was a good day. <laughs> I did not think at all about qualifying time uh, today. I actually didn't think about it either after. I just heard I was 12th and they take the first 11th. And the girl who ended up in front of me was only like 12 seconds ahead of me, I think. Um, so, yeah, it's, but that's part of sports and I think I'm still happy about my season, especially with how it started so poorly. Um, I mean, if in Ola del Noya you would have told me you will end up 12th overall, I would have not believed it. So I think I've got no regrets to have. Yeah, so now my plans, um, I'm sticking with plan B. Uh, so since I got uh, a golden ticket on the national series to go race in Azores, uh, I'm doing that. Um, so uh, the stage race is in a month, uh, and I'll, right now I'll just go back home since I didn't qualify for El Hierro, but I did qualify for the Azores stage race, so uh, hopefully we'll see each other there. If you look at La Sportiva this season, they've already gotten a deer, their poster boy. There was a home race for him. He was the one expected to do well. And Jan joined them as an extra bonus. But by the Donomis run, it looked like their season was over. And yeah, fair play to Jan. He started off okay and just got worse. And most runners would have returned to their national series and given up on the Golden Trail. But Jan came back and to win, he was laughing the whole way around. If you see the video, he was having fun and he reminded everyone that he is the fastest descender in this series. For him, he's back. And in the final, people are gonna to start to think, could Jan really be challenging us? But for La Sportiva, he saved them. And he's not the person they thought he would this season. My biggest change this, this season is for sure my changing from, from Salomon team to La Sportiva team. I started in the elite of trail running when I was 18 and everything comes so fast. Like from one year to another, I was like only in my, in my comfort zone with my routine from all my life until that moment to the next year I moved to the Pyrenees for studies. I start learning French, I start joining the Salomon international team, and I start like living a life that was like the dream life. <laughs> At one moment it stopped due to an injury, and like it just went to zero from full gas to zero again. And I think that's why everything get a little bit strange. I start to to have insomnia and to sleep really bad and not enough. And for maybe two years, I was struggling with uh, not a lot of sleep. And so my body was my body was really tired. Like I couldn't recover as well as as before. My mind was all the time like working, working, working. It was impossible to, to disconnect. And and yeah, for sure, it was not uh, the the cause of it, it was not the real pressure from, from my team or, or whatever. It was more that I didn't know how to manage it. But, but yeah, maybe it was for, for this reason that I wanted to make a change, that I wanted to, to build like a, a team or a structure in my own way. Like I'm quite on my own way. And, and that's what I like the most from this year is that I can do whatever I want. And with the people I, I like uh, close to me. I've had the chance to, to enjoy this life and I want to do it again. Like that's the main objective, to, to be able to, to live this life that we are living now. 
as long as possible. As long as I'm enjoying it and to leave it without pressure, we can see the results in Skyrun and hopefully here too. Like I feel much better. I feel more relaxed, like less tired than than before. And my shape, I think it's it's in really in really good shape. When you have a final, you want to show, but you want to test the athletes to their absolute limit. And boy, did they do that. The heat was really cranking up. This is definitely the warmest and most intense race I've ever done. The finals got 100,000 euros on offer, with the winners taking home 10,000 each. Went towards this fence, and I was thinking, what if I just jump down this cliff? That at the moment seems like a very good idea. I have a lot of new scars. You need to take something home from such a race. 